Travis Etienne is quickly becoming one of the most polarizing NFL players in the upcoming 2022 NFL season. In this video, we'll break down three reasons why you should be drafting Travis Etienne and avoid the naysayers. Triple Play Fantasy's YouTube channel is built to help you win your leagues in football, baseball, and basketball. So make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up on all the best content. Now let's get into the video. For reason number one, let's start with the obvious. He's finally healthy. Etienne missed his entire 2021 rookie season due to a Liz Frank sprain. David J. Chow. There are different degrees of Liz Frank sprains. Technically, he could have made a late season return last year, but the Jags were a dumpster fire and had nothing to play for. So Etienne has had extra time to recover. Now that he's in camp, Travis had this to say about his injury in April. I would say I'm about 85, 90% area. I'm not doing everything, but I'm doing the majority of the stuff I got back. I want to say I felt maybe like two, three weeks ago, I felt like I could really get back to myself. Um, just being out there running full speed and uh, just feeling fast, just just running, man. It felt awesome just to be out there just running again. So I say I'm about 85 to 90%. Uh, the, the most difficult part is uh, just the time, uh, just how long it takes to actually get back to yourself and uh, just knowing how far the season is away. So I would say the day-to-day, -day, uh, I had to fall in love with the mundane. So I would say just um, waking up every day knowing that where you, you want to be, where like where you want to be, you're not going to get there today. And just put in that work. So I would say to, uh, just fall in love with the mundane. So with the bare minimum out of the way, let's talk about the actual football reasons that ETN is a must own. He's got all the talent in the world to be an elite producer. ETN is a 5'10", shifty bowling ball out of Clemson. He ran a 4'5'40 at the 40-yard dash for the combine, which is 80th percentile in his position. And then at his pro day, he ran a 4'4'5'40, which judging by his play speed, looks to be a lot closer than what he actually runs. On top of that, he had a 12.2% target share in college, which is 90th percentile for running backs. ETN became a bigger part of the offense every year he was at Clemson. He was efficient when he ran the ball, had an exceptional 6.6 .6 yards per carry average, which ranked in the 87th percentile for his position. He had 766 rushing yards on 107 attempts and 13 touchdowns in his freshman year, but only had seven targets through the air. The next year, he broke out with 204 rushing attempts and just under 1,700 yards, with 26 total touchdowns on 15 targets through the air. His next year, he became an even bigger part of the Clemson offense. He kept the same rushing prowess with 207 touches and 1,600 yards, with 23 total touchdowns, and he did even more damage through the air as he doubled his target share from 2.9% the previous year to 7.5% the following year on 28 targets. His senior year, his target share jumped to 12.2% on 60 targets, and he managed 16 total touchdowns in 12 games, despite getting 40 less touches on the ground. He had 55 runs of 20 plus yards during his career at Clemson, which is the most in the NCAA during that stretch. Urban Meyer might have one of the worst pro coaching track records in recent memory, but one thing is for sure, he didn't make a mistake in drafting ETN. But there's a third part of the equation that must be necessary for a breakout year, and that's opportunity. It doesn't matter how talented you are if you're not getting the touches. That won't be a problem for ETN though. Doug Peterson is the new coach in Jacksonville and he'll be calling the plays on offense. We have a large sample size of what that looks like. Peterson likes a high-tempo, run-first offense and uses multiple running backs. That last part doesn't sound good for ETN, but we'll talk about that later. In each of Peterson's first five seasons calling plays, he's had a top 11 rushing offense. Back in 2015, when Peterson first gained notoriety taking over play calling duties for Andy Reid in Kansas City, the Chiefs' average points per game increased by a touchdown. Their passing yards per game decreased by 24%, and rushing yards increased by 43 yards per game. They also increased their time of possession by four minutes and 26 seconds per game. This will keep the Jags defense sharp and wear down opposing defenses. The Jags have upgraded their offensive line and their tight ends, adding Evan Ingram into the mix, which is critical for Doug Peterson offenses. As for the running back by committee threat that I glossed over earlier, that is a reason to be worried about ETN's production, but the Jags are also in a unique position in this regard. James Robinson would be first on the depth chart, but he suffered a season-ending injury late last season and is likely to miss a good chunk of time this year. 
which catapults ETN to first string. There are only two other running backs on the roster in Raquel Armstead, who's never been a lead back and would likely only be used to spell ETN, and the rookie Snoop Connor, who wasn't even a lead back at Ole Miss and can be thought of as a bruiser or a goal line back, considering his lack of top end speed and elite strength for his position. ETN is likely to be the guy and have a workhorse role in store for him, even though that's historically not Doug Peterson's style. Let's listen to what ETN has to say about his role early. Nah, yes, sir. I feel like if Coach wanted to uh, use me as that guy, I mean, I feel like I definitely have the athleticism to do that. And I feel like, uh, for me, just the biggest thing I want to do is to get out there week one, tear it up, and just be myself again, honestly. So, uh, however Coach want to use me, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm willing to do it. Uh, I just want to help the team win games. Uh, so much time, I feel like uh, I'm really close. Uh, it just, it's, it's just really getting cleared by the doctors. If it was up to me, I feel like I was 100% three weeks ago. But uh, it's just going through that process, uh, going through the day-to-day, and just um, just keep just doing what they asked me to do. Is there any Doug and Press talk to you about how they envision you in this offense moving forward? Uh, no, sir. No, nah, not really. Uh, not yet. I kind of heard bits and pieces from my uh, running back coach. But uh, I, I'm sure they plan on getting the ball in my hands. Uh, I feel like I'm a special player with the ball in my hands, so they give me the ball. As long as we get the ball, we could. It seems like opponents aren't going to really know exactly where you're going to be. And, and it, it seems like that's sort of a common theme throughout the offense. It's fun seeing like where Christian Kirk's lining up and Evan Ingram. And what's it like being a part of that offense and, and kind of playing for a coach that seems like he's going to be able to keep the opponent on their toes in terms of defensively what they want to do. I mean, uh, football is getting a matchup. The coach definitely knows that. So he tried to put us in a position to take, uh, take advantage of the matchup that they give us. And I mean, the guys getting different places is going to help us just get more explosive offense and create those plays. And be able to make plays when we need the most and uh, just be able to go out there and just present different things to the defense. So, so it's not, they, 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 they don't know what we're doing before we do it. I feel like last year we were kind of like, we kind of knew what's going to happen, but this year we're kind of all over the place, and I feel like it's going to work in our favor. Travis, what's the biggest challenge for you right now? Is it you know picking up a new playbook? Is it just making sure that you're doing everything you need to stay healthy? What was sort of the biggest challenge for you as a player right now in, in OTAs? Uh, I would say the biggest challenge for me right now is uh, just prehabbing, just uh, knowing I come off the injury, uh, so just taking advantage of it and. Uh, just, just, just really just trying to make sure I don't be in a situation that I was last year with being hurt. So just trying to put good things in my body uh, so that my body responds the right way. And uh, just, just not, not trying to get, get hurt again. You're, you're such, such a good sport through this interview, interview in a pouring rain. We can't uh, tell, tell you how much we appreciate it. One, one last one for you. I love it when, when you guys quick snap out of the huddle. You, know, you, you get out of the huddle, you get right to the line, the ball snapped, and, and they gave you the ball a couple of times in that opportunity. As a running back, what's that like? Uh, I mean, it's great. Uh, it's, it's great every time you get the ball. And I mean, uh, going around pushing up, we kind of got the defense still moving around, so we kind of catch them off guard. And uh, our ultimate line do a great job of throwing the guys off the ball. So uh, for me, it's just getting an opportunity to go out there and just get a quick inch, so I get that big play and I get an end zone. Travis CCN, thank you so much for your time. Certainly yes, look forward to uh, covering with you. It's, it's a pleasure being here. here. Triple Play Fantasy's YouTube channel is always looking out for you. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can see all the breakdowns we drop. Thanks for watching.